is blowing, storm clouds moving in. Whatever's gonna happen, it's about to I remember what the drum doggy told me when he said, son, don't be. That's where the page line is about to be. Then he's gonna tell you about the wind and the rain. Gonna tell you which way it's going. If it's gonna be a hurricane. Don't you worry about the news that they try to hide. Just click on my page, drunk on the nationwide. They don't understand that Mike's got a friend and a hundred thousand more across the land. Well, if you want to know it first and you want to know it right and you want to have time to plan, Drunk Donkey Nation tells your friend, Mike, he's your man. Then he's going to tell you all about the wind and the rain. Going to tell you if it's going to be a storm. If it's gonna be a hurricane, don't you worry about the news that it's trying to hide. Click on Mike's page, Drum Donkey Nationwide. Yeah, here on Mike's page, Drum Donkey Nationwide. Alright, what's up everybody? Good morning. Coming to you live from Oldsmar, Florida. It is Wednesday, March 20th. Good to see everybody. In Louie. Let's pull up Louie. We had Hunter on uh, Monday, so we'll talk about Louie today. Louie is the... OG, is that what they call everybody? The original? OG? Is that what that is? O original? OG? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so good morning, Miss Shelly Ross. Over there on the East Coast. Attempting to stream on five platforms this morning, but TikTok said we needed an update, so I had to wait because I didn't want that popping up all over my screen. We're testing our new brew crew mike's other page chat page for subscribers so excited shelly will tell you it's like christmas we've been talking about a new subscriber platform for over a year and we are ready to roll that way all weather fans can meet and not have to be on any particular device more to come on that but I want to tell you now, <laughs> the notifications are so cool. As a brew crew member, you will get notifications via email, app, and PC when I post. So you'll never miss a weather post ever again. We'll be streaming live in there. And uh, all the feed will be weather only. And you'll see the latest and greatest first and foremost when you need it. Not three days old weather, but three minute old weather. But we'll still be everywhere else too. This is just for our uh, four ninety nine and up subscribers that support us. Less than a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> hey, Eric, what's up, man? Eric was on our brew, our uh, our um, brew cruise, <laughs> the Mike's Road Page cruise. Uh, what's up, Loretta Reed? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Tom William Strunk, what's up, Nancy Powers, Katie, Bob Parrish, Richard Reamer, Mary Hernandez, what's going on, Amy Brown, Miss Mary, good morning, Ryan Sullivan from Naples, got big rain heading your way down there, Ryan, 
we got a lot to talk about. I got a lot of cool windows. I like the new thing of getting windows open. Kind of sets the direction of the day. This is Louie, by the way. Nice, Phil. What's up, Miss Donna? 60th anniversary. How about that, Donna? Congratulations. Good morning, Mr. James. It was a decent day of softball. We still won. Emily had a great day going until she uh, made an error. Made the most spectacular plays, and then the easy ones she bobbled. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Joe? This might be the last hurrah for cool weather. I got called out on X just now. Somebody said, it's not chilly, it's perfect. Well, it's chilly to me. <laughs> we all have feelings. My feelings are different than your feelings, and I thought it was chilly. Anyway. All right, ABC Fine Wine and Spirits, our big sponsor of our daily brew you'll see them everywhere on our pages we appreciate all that they do for us and support me and the weather page um i want to do another shout out today since last night don't be bored local company done right roofing helping sponsor emily softball team in the palm harbor hurricanes they have some great blog section if you're in the area pasco pinellas hillsborough clearwater Go to their blog section. They got a great articles on hurricanes, how to prepare your home before, during, and after storms, hailstorms. A lot of great reading, but they do have a nice hurricane section here about how to prepare your roof for hurricanes as hurricane season is inching in. But big thanks to them for what they do. I have something else exciting to show you right there. Kyle Weatherman and I have become friends. He is a NASCAR driver with the most perfect name. Oh, Shelly, just saw that. Thank you. Wow, we get along pretty good. Um, good morning, Miss Valerie Bauer. Marie had built different. That's right. We're all, I got thin skin. Katie Lee, right? <laughs> Kathy and Fort Myers. But I do keep the house cold. <laughs> it is weird. So anyway, Kyle Weatherman has an awesome sponsor this week. Would you look at that? My Radar. I've only used My Radar a few times. I use Radar Scope. Uh, My Radar is a free radar uh, app. So check it out. Hey, they sponsor my boy Kyle Weatherman. That's a pretty cool looking race car. So that'll be happening this weekend. I think they're racing Darlington maybe this weekend. I don't know. Another exciting map before we talk the weather is from the Weather Channel. Louie. What do you think about that, Louie? That is the pollen map. I just got an alert. So I keep, um, I have a weather bug app too. I have an alert this morning that came on my phone from Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge for pollen warning. <laughs> we have a pollen warning. I'm hoping that light green across the middle part of the state means our pollen is done. Because man, it has been terrible. And the pollen is moving to the north. So there you go. Pe people in red, I feel ya. It has been awful. The little green bugs are real. They, ta they attack you. They come crawling on your head and you're like, Ugh. So, all right, let's put Louie down and talk some weather. Say bye-bye, buddy. Louie had a birthday yesterday, by the way, right? It was your birthday. You're six years old. Can you believe we got Louie on the show? We had Rusty on the show years ago, and then I got Louie as a puppy, and we debuted Louie on our show six years ago. We had Louie. Six years, y'all, have been watching Louie grow up together. And we even have a coffee cup. Cheers. All right. Pollen is there. All right, let's talk about weather. 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 Weather, weather, weather. All right. There is what it looks like right now. I just got a text from somebody. I got to see if it's important or not. I don't know if it's important or not. I don't know the number. Oh, yeah, we did not go to Starbucks for Louie. That was sad of us. I know. We'll, we'll pretend it's today. He won't know the difference. <laughs> So this is what it looks like. This is a water vapor map right now currently, and yellows is dry air. There's a lot of blue sunshine out there today. Blue sunshine. Wait a minute. Is there such a thing as blue sunshine? There's a lot of blue skies 
<laughs> and sunshine. Oh, by the way, I pulled uh, Julie's decorating the house today. It's Easter time. We're a little late. Easter's early this year. But look, I pulled out something to celebrate Easter. So I wanted to show that. I don't know why. I just think it's so cool. It's like a sock made bunny rabbit. I think we bought it from somebody that was making it at a craft craft show. But hey, Easter's coming a week from Sunday. Yay! I don't want to do All right, so this big blob of moisture is El Nino driven storms coming this way. Remember El Nino, southern jet stream, pumping uh, moisture and winds from the Pacific. You can see it. This is coming. Dun -dun 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 so here we go. A little bit of El Nino left. Southern jet stream coming, and it is creating. A big dip here coming down, and who the heck knows is what's happening here. I love my TikTok. I did a clickbait. Cyclogenesis. It's a real thing. People always get mad at me. They're like, don't call it a cyclone. It is a cyclone. You want to know why it's called a cyclone? Look, go to this SPC discussion, and somewhere in there, they're going to talk about a cyclone somewhere. Um, they, You know... Oh, here it is right here. I didn't have to take long. Look at that. A deep cyclone. Not only a cyclone is coming, but a deep cyclone. Cyclone is just basically a low pressure. Tropical cyclone is different. I never say tropical cyclone. I say cyclone. But man, it gets people mad. Mad. They get so angry. Angry. They're like, why do you call it that? I'm mad at all right, let's talk about some of the graphics that I posted this morning. Let me close this out. All right, so here's a couple things. Have you ever figured out, if you're new to the page, I post a lot of stuff in the morning time, usually starting around 5.30 sometimes. Depends. Five, you know, depends. I don't know. But anyway, here's some maps talking about what's coming. All right, this is a blend of models, which is awesome, because what this one does is it takes all the models and puts them together. So it's not just a GFS, not just a year. It's a bunch of models. And you kind of get the feeling kind of feel who's getting what this is the tip of florida there are going to be some storms coming across louisiana today we're going to show you maybe uh, down south here at the same time frame to worry about but as far as heavy rains go could be some significant rains a couple inches two three inches this is through sunday night this is not a uh, long range this is looking through the weekend sunday night so you pretty much see interstate four central florida that it appears right now most of the rain but we still have an inch yellow is still an inch so it looks like a good soaking for a lot of folks here, especially into Georgia, eastern Alabama. Uh, then the Carolinas, this thing's going to pivot up there. We're going to talk about that, but parts of Carolina, I can see a couple inches. So there you go. I mean, that's a lot of rain. Not a lot, a lot of rain, but a lot of rain. <laughs> Timing has been something we've been talking a lot about. So baby shark lore singing. God, baby shark. Oh, my God. I don't want to do that. Keisha, good morning. Hey, from Jamaica. What's up down there? Let's see what Jamaica... Well, we'll talk about Jamaica a little bit later. James Ford ordered a shirt. Thank you, buddy. Don't tell anybody yet. We... <laughs> well, they won't be able to find it. Excuse me. All right. Timing has been something we've been talking a lot about. All right. So, we got a big blob coming across the Gulf. Tomorrow's Thursday. We're going to start to see it on radar. We're going to start seeing a big blow up of convection out there in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And it's going to be making its way across the Gulf. So the timing is tricky, but it's not. I like somebody said, so basically we don't know. Well, we do know. This is four models, tropicaltidbits.com. Look, this is the same timestamp, Friday morning, sometime between 8 and noon, right? Some of these are uh, 12Z, some are uh, uh, 18Z, which is pretty much, so, you know, the bottom line is this Friday morning, we got Euro heavy rain, Canadian heavy rain, GFS heavy rain, and Icon fairly heavy rain. So, pretty good agreement. Friday, you might wake up to sprinkles, but the big stuff's going to be coming in through the day. And um, the Euro has been trending more uh, south. And the GFS has been trending a little bit more to the north. As we see with any low pressure, uh, south of the center of this thing will produce storms. And 
Uh, that's the big question mark. The farther north this goes, the more chances for storms for folks in the peninsula. The farther south it goes, the more storms staying on the south part of Florida. So it's a guarantee the Florida Peninsula is going to get storms on Friday. Just don't know who. <laughs> then this thing pivots. And we're not trying to forget anybody in the Carolinas along the East Coast. But we can see some pretty good wind gusts. So this thing is going to be tightening up into a deepening low pressure area. And the Euro is tightening up to 999 pressure. Now nothing's, you know, very, very low chances it gets uh, organized to be named. Now maybe, maybe when it passes the Outer Banks, maybe. We'll see. But these type of systems, you know, we had one last year in January. Not, I mean, it is not common. So I posted it was uncommon and I got called out. It, it's not rare. How about that? It's not unheard of to see a, a system become named early season. Not maybe uncommon wasn't the best word. It's 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 not rare. It's not unheard of. How about that? I don't know. It's not breaking news. <laughs> but the bottom line is this: the effects. Right now, we're just going to talk about the effects. But the euro Saturday 5 p.m. You can see the low center point somewhere down here on p.m. Saturday a.m. The low is around here somewhere. So I think that really means is timing on GFS is uh, downhill more Saturday into, into Saturday. You're a little bit later. But some of these wind gusts are pretty big. I mean, the, the, the I didn't go to the bigger pockets, but the Euro is showing 60-plus wind gusts as this thing spirals and brings in storms, possibly. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, North Carolina, uh, maybe a little bit into South Carolina. Um, but North Carolina for sure. Outer Banks for sure going to get some pretty big weather out of this thing. And maybe north, Virginia northward, as this thing escapes off to the Atlantic. This is a wave map I posted, and those are pretty big. This is off Tropical Tidbits, too. This is not. This is off Windy. But um, look at the red, 15-plus seas. Um, could be inching up there, 20-foot seas. So this isn't this is not surge. These are waves. They get reduced as a near the coast however with these big winds with these waves we can see some pretty big coastal impacts new moon is the 25th so you're about two days away from the the worst case with the impacts but that's gonna be pretty big for sure all right storms today let's talk about it let's talk about it amanda yeah i, I don't care i got it i you know i get it it is not common, but it's not unheard of. <laughs> and who says I've ever been the best with the English language, right? Oh, anyway, cyclogenesis. I love it. It's such a scary word. Um, leaving Friday around 4 from Alabama, driving to New York. Eh, I shouldn't be worried, Michelle. Um, no, you, you, no. No. Just be aware. Just be rain. Don't be worried. Just take your time. Don't drive with your flashers on. I don't know if that's legal or not. It's not in Florida, apparently. Even though everybody does it. Hey, Richard uh, Sanford, good morning. All right, so here's the weather mats for today. Um, obviously, we saw already saw the um, jet stream coming in from the south and lower texas could see some storms today this is for wednesday tomorrow thursday we start to see these storm chances spread a little bit more to louisiana and we're starting to see dark green which means we can see some significant storms coming in off of the gulf of mexico we're going to have southern jet blowing in uh and we got a um dipping in the upper level jet to the north Periodically, nothing's ever set in stone, but this is the general area to be watching Thursday. We do have a tornado outlook coming in for lower Texas and Louisiana. This is 2%, but doesn't mean there's uh, zero chances. We could uh, definitely see a little spin-up tornado tomorrow, Thursday. Now, Friday's interesting. So here's our Friday map. Sometime on Friday, we're going to have our big golf blob. It's including lower, lower Louisiana, but mainly here, a little tip there going into Florida Peninsula. 
Florida Panhandle there, Florida Peninsula. There. So there's your uh, storm map. So the uh, storm dig center going with the Euro with a little bit lower track. This is this is the storm area, but they are talking about tornadoes already for Friday. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. Um, you know, I'm not trying to overhype it. This is the official maps, but you know, three days out, uh, three day map. Usually they don't get too aggressive, so we'll keep an eye on this. It'll get tweaked to later and tomorrow. We'll see another map tomorrow, and then of course for Friday we'll definitely see what's going on. But generally, Florida Peninsula. A little bit there in the Florida uh, Panhandle and a little bit there in the upper uh, Louisiana coastline. We could see this as this storm comes across. So that's that was kind of what we were expecting to see today. Um, and then there's your severe weather outlook. Same same areas. Pretty much hinting there could be possible tornado areas in the brown. But again, we'll, that'll get tweaked. Then we get a little break, but then here's our next system coming down. Just want to point this out. Sunday, another dip in the jet stream in case you're hanging out in Texas or Oklahoma. Now, what is it going to look like? All right, so this is a, a simulated infrared satellite map. Linda, what's uh Heading to New Orleans for Easter. Well, what would I do? Are you driving? Well, I don't know. He got me on that one. I don't know if you live, if you left now. I don't know where you live at. So you left now. You can beat it. You know, if that's what you want. They'll be gone by Easter, though. Okay, so it's the blob. Miss Katie, are you home? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, God, now we're talking cereal. Mark. <laughs> uh, just ask Shelly. Sheila. Just ask Sheila. <laughs> Sheila's making a cruise page for us, I think, right, Shelly? Um, we'll be sharing a little bit more. Our cruise, man, we got about 15 cabins already booked, 20 cabins. So I have a feeling this one's going to sell out. We try to get about 50 cabins as our initial goal. So if you want to hang out with us in June next year, first week of June, we're kicking off hurricane season. Hopefully. June is pretty quiet, so I'm not worried about a little tropical storm. All right, let's see what it's going to look like. All right, so here's tomorrow morning, Thursday. Can't really zoom in on the infrared, oh, but we might be able to if I go to call from Mexico. Yes, I can. Oh, my God. I love it when a good plan comes together. I haven't even looked at the other chat. So let me see. I got I to gotta drag it. Oh, still looks good over there. I just can't turn off the preview, but anyway. All right. Um, here's what it's going to look like. Flashes are legal. All right. Graphic butterfly. There you go. Cool. Didn't know that. That's why I said I don't know. <laughs> um, here is what it's going to look like. All right. So tomorrow morning. Now, you know, we talked about the blob shirt on Monday, golf blob season. This is what it might look like in Fred. This is not meant to be scary. It's just meant to, hey, tomorrow, midday, we could see convection coming across. That's why they are highlighting lower Louisiana as possible having some strong storms tomorrow. And curiosity, here's what we got. So, Friday... This is uh, overnight Friday yet. This is not Friday morning yet. This is, um, but this area right here, the last storm system that we had, holy moly, that's a big old blobish right there. That's, that's Friday morning. The last time we had this happen a week or so back, the storm prediction center talked about the loop current and, oh, it doesn't go there. I messed that one all the way up. The loop current does that. And if we go back and look at the loop current, they mentioned this specifically. So again, I'm not hyping anything. I never try to hype. Trust me. Mike the hype is not real. There's our loop current. Oh, our thing did break off. Look at that. We were watching this a week ago. So our little guy broke off. Now we have a massive loop current. That's pretty, pretty mad. This is, I've never experienced it, but fishermen tell me it's amazing the current with these loop eddies. 
That's our loop, loop eddy spinning in the Gulf of Mexico. It drifts west, but we got a new loop current now developing, which will eventually push up. This little loop eddy will slide this way and become its own little guy out here spinning. And this little guy will end up stretching back up and start to process all over again. But, um, but stop moving around there. Come on! Can't get it off. Oh, well. It was stuck. It's like, oh, get off of there! But anyway, this is warm water. Likely the SPC will talk about this in their discussion for Friday. Um, but this is kind of what we're looking at. So this is Friday morning. Now, this is this is where it could get interesting. Uh, the convection to me always points to the possibility of some thunderstorm development out in that Gulf of Mexico. Um, and this is, you know, let me close that little guy. This is kind of what's going to happen Friday morning. And you can just see it come through the state. And it's not a classic comma like the storm of 93, but there is a big dip in the jet I'm going to show you, which could fuel this in the producing storms. That's why more than likely middle bottom half of the state is going to get the strongest chances of storms on Friday. But there's your convection. Now let's go back to the whole U.S. Show you what it might look like after it passes Florida. And, you know, that's a, that's a lot of heavy convection. Now you can see where this low is setting up Saturday. That's why these winds are going to be piling up here the outer banks northward as they spiral spiral around this low pressure area cyclogenesis <laughs> is is happening and that's a d developing uh cyclone deep low pressure area so anyway that's going to be interesting to watch and then it goes off to new england and most of it should be gone by sunday so at least sunday most of it looks like, remember Monday, remember we were, were Monday if it was going to linger? Well, now it looks like by Sunday it's going to be pretty much gone. A little bit lingering to New England. But as far as the ones that were impacted Friday and Saturday, it looks nice. So Saturday, later, so later, so Saturday looks pretty darn good for Southeast. Um, Sunday looks good for Mid-Atlantic. And there's that. The other thing I want to show you is this. Now, this is what is really cool. This is your upper level jet. This is more 700 millibar, but we can look at 500 millibar too. And it's kind of, kind of say, signaling storms. You know, this is why, you know, I wanted to do my little TikTok video about it. Um, this is, this is a, uh, almost a cutoff low. This is 500 millibar. Anytime you get a 500 millibar dip in the jet stream, it just brings some instability up. And we get winds that are, you know, uh, coming around this like this. You got energy coming here. So basically, you just got a lot of instability and the ability for storms to happen. So these little red pockets are pretty much showing you storm chances um, because of this dip in the jet. And 500 millibar, that's a pretty good looking dip. I'm surprised there isn't more discussion about this, actually, to tell you the truth. But there's not. Here's 700 millibar, almost a cutoff low here. Uh, this is, you know, Friday uh, night. But there's your, you know, setup coming in. I know it doesn't look like much, but this is things I look at. Um, and we'll see, you know. Yeah, we'll see, all right. But nothing yet. But, ah, man, I'm telling you, I, I think there's going to be some sneaky storms uh, all along Florida. And then uh, up through the Carolinas northward a little bit as this thing pivots around so now there are a lot of people talking about next week storms this is sunday this is a really big dip in the jet so there's been a lot of discussion about next week uh more your tornado alley storm area um tomorrow or next week and it looks like it lifts out of here pretty quick one thing about the southeast potential now this is going to be a pretty significant storm storm system uh mm. I always try to go around the bar. I got to go up, click, and then around. And then, so this type of setup here, Sunday, Monday, a lot of storms out ahead of this line. But when this thing lifts out of here, the, when, when these low pressures lift to the northeast fast, uh, things get stable out ahead of it. And we don't see much uh, jet stream uh, action to the south. So for in order for the south... In the east coast to get significant storms you need a little jet stream influence with the upper level winds and we don't get that a lot down here so uh, when we have the help from el nino come across upper level jet stream 
um, which you can see really well in Tropical Tidbits. I didn't look at it, but I'm sure it's showing pretty good. Um, when you have that combined with a dip from the north, then you get um, uh, the chances of a little more severe storms. Um, I don't know if we can do a blend on this one, but well, this is really showing a lot of color. It's very hard to see that. Uh, let's just stick with 200 millibar, I guess. I'll tell you another one you can really see it good at is, um, um, there's your dip right there. So that's just kind of showing you the jet stream uh, dipping down upper level 200 millibar. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. You know, again, the Euro's trending a little farther south. So, you know, I-4 south looks like could be the strongest storms. But I would not rule out anybody in the peninsula at this point for severe storms. So anyway, what's up, Mr. Jason Fowler for... Uh, Myrtle Beach Saturday morning. Oh man, I don't think it looks really good, man. I'll tell you the truth, does not look good. Tanya, I will be chasing as now Shelly goes. Urgh. I got some cool new wires for my truck. I'm so excited. I've I got some 90 degree short little guys. Um, getting it all set up. I like, to, I like, I'm a big wire guy. I hate wires. Shelly will know that because we did our conference at sea and I started tucking wires away right away. I, I hate wires. I'm always big about wires. Saturday, Jason, here's why, buddy. Um, I don't know, man. I just don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but here's Saturday morning on the GFS. GFS is faster, but, you know, Oh, that's Euro, excuse me. Uh, GFS is out of here. So, you know, the morning time definitely, you know, the best bet's going to be more afternoon. If this thing, if it, if it speeds up out of here, then by afternoon, maybe a little lingering, but by afternoon it should be hopefully okay. You know, Euro's saying it's going to stick around a little longer. Um, morning doesn't look good, put it to you that way. And that's because you're going to have a lot of winds. Um, here's your wind map. Let's just show everybody for the wind map. So here's your winds coming in. Um, here's your low dipping. That's that big dip in the jet stream. But we're going to have a lot of winds off the Atlantic Saturday, 3 a.m. And as our low finally sets up and comes across, uh, and that's pretty I mean, that is low pressure. I'm telling you, man. 996. Anyway, uh, we could, like I said, we're. As this thing tightens up and pat this is Saturday 5 p.m. I think we're gonna see some really sneaky weather across the Outer Banks. But anyway, all the winds spiraling around it, obviously. So it's gonna be windy as this thing passes by. We're gonna see some, you know, but once it passes by, um, more of the winds are coming back out around it, so you don't get as big an impacts in the northeast like you do when something pivots a little closer to the coast. So this thing should get out of here. Um, could bring some nasty weather to our friends in Bermuda here. Here's some big winds Sunday down in Bermuda. Um, let's talk about that real quick. Here's Bermuda. Yeah, oh boy, big time. This is su su Sunday night. So as our low spins out of here Sunday, this is Sunday 6 p.m., the tail, this is rain and thunder map. We can see something really getting into Bermuda now. The GFS about the same. So yeah, Bermuda, look at that. We got, we got Lori Ryan here. Uh, but look, look uh, low pressure, could be windy. Sunday night, Hamilton right there. So we could see some rains and storms and some winds for you all there coming in uh, for sure on Sunday night. Not bad, bad, but bad, bad enough. Um, so, yeah. You know, unfortunately things three days out. You, you kind of have a six hour, you have like a, like a six hour wiggle room of like s storms as they uh, pass um, before things get fine tuned. Usually models meet in the middle. That's why that one graphic was important to show you Friday morning, pretty much everybody's showing something in the ball, in the Gulf. So that's, that's pretty good confidence. It's just a matter of who gets the heaviest Friday. A little turn to the north, more of the Florida Peninsula. A little to the south, more 
lower half of the peninsula. So it's a, it's a little fine line right now, but it'll the models will tweak a little bit. Now, what's I do want to point out a couple interesting notes. Um, let me close this one out. I think I got everything up here I wanted to see. Uh, this is an interesting little graphic. Doesn't mean anything, not to hype nothing, but you know, I shared one Monday. These are our tropical probability maps that Euro has, and what's kind of kind of interesting. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, um, but it is showing a little color as our thing passes through Florida. Alan Davis, I think. Oh, Friday, Saturday looks well. Again, Friday doesn't look good. Uh, Early Saturday. Well, Saturday looks better for sure for Savannah. Friday not looking so good. So, Tiki Man, Bahama Bound. Got a lot of people going Bahamas. All right. Um, softball Brandy and uh, Claremont. Where are you at? Legends Field. Isn't it amazing when you go to Claremont, the mountains? <laughs> Anybody, anybody's laughing right now that's from up north, but we have mountains in Florida, Claremont. They're like, they're hills. <laughs> Dana wants to know about golf on Friday in Dalton. Oh, I think you'll be far enough north away from this. Ultra Fest, Nick. Yeah, you know it, buddy. Saturday and Sunday look fine. It's just maybe a little lingering Saturday, but Friday is going to be... Uh, no snorkel left yet, Shelly. I did um, my PA horn it shorted out. I bought a, a thing of um, liquid black tape, and I poured it all in there. So there's no way anything's getting in there. It looks like crap, but I didn't care. I just dumped it all in there. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to pull the fuses out, but I don't care. So, anyway... Keys, Angela, be very high on alert. Big storms Friday. This is uh, not showing anything other than it's kind of interesting because it means the season's slowly waking up. These are tropical maps. Now, you know, nothing storm. Well, they are showing storm. I'm surprised. Huh. Interesting. Usually you don't get tropical storm. But anyway, you know, a few of the models are hinting our low pressure could turn. But very low. But hey, 10%. But anyway, that just gives the idea. We got a low pressure system developing through the state. Um, weather nerds we go to, um, it kind of shows you low pressure possibilities. Three out of 51. There's 51 members, but you know, 999, 996, 1000, you know, 1004. Not that many, 997, 990. It just shows you very, very few little ensembles are saying low pressure. But. What you are getting is this model map here. This is confidence as far as low pressure centers. And a lot of them are 980 to 999. And this is just basically a low pressure area. So good confidence we're going to see um, low pressure skirting, skirting uh, the East Coast uh, as it exits Florida. And it's only Wednesday, so let's wait and see more as we get closer. Some of the tropical tidbits maps, which we love. Let's take a look at some lower level winds. Um, this is kind of give you an idea. Let's go to, oh, we got 6Z yet? Hey, we actually kind of do. So what's interesting with the Euro, it's actually showing a little 1,006 with some pretty good little wind, winds down here attached to it. Um, so these are your 10 meter winds, which is usually surface level. Anything green is 20 knots plus 25 knots. So it could, it could get quite windy, but this is uh, this is some pretty good little winds. Little little spot, 1,006. Now, this is not a tropical system, but could bring some nasty weather south Tampa Bay. If, you know, remember I said the Euro's been trending a little to the south, which I trust more than the GFS. Um, but, you know, rotating winds. We could see some some sneaky little winds. And, then and of course, this brings squall lines. We're going to have plenty of golf fuel out there with the jet stream. But this is, you know, model map. And then as we go in time, that's a lot of winds here now pushing up into uh, the East Coast. Nothing's really showing really organized, really kind of yet, maybe, 999. But these are all winds rotating around this low. So that's why I'm saying North Carolina, this is Saturday midday. 
Lots of wins here rotating in, and uh, that'll be something to kind of watch. 996, 995. Hey, man, you know, I'm not saying there's zero chance. You never say never in the tropics. It could be some sort of a weird subtropical system uh, last second. But, there, there's, you know, there's a lot of wind shear. Um, attached to it. So it would be very hard for it to develop too much as your upper level wind shear. But, eh, you never know. I mean, hey. 10% chance. 995, though. Hey, usually 995 is a, a low-end tropical storm. So it'll feel tropical stormish. It will feel tropical stormish. <laughs> All right. There's that. And there's your little 995 pressure system there. So uh, we got a lot to watch. I'm very curious. All right, let's go back to the winds again. Let's see what the 10-meter uh, winds on the GFS look like. Mm, it was sloppy. Same thing, though. See, now it's pivoting a little lower. If there is such a thing as a center, it is a little south of Tampa Bay, 1006. This is uh, Friday morning. There's a euro. So, hey, you know, kind of kind of good consistency there. And here's your winds as it passes through um, early Saturday morning. Remember, counterclockwise flow, all that's going to be hitting up in the Carolinas for big winds on Saturday morning. And then your icon, which we love. Let's take a look here. Not showing much, but then there's your big winds as it exits out. So it's going to be a windy day across uh, Florida Peninsula on Friday. Hmm, there you go. There you go. So that's about it. What's up, Mr. Ian? Hey, let's look at Jamaica since we got a few people from Jamaica. All right, let's see what's going on. Let's take a look at the Jamaica map. This front might be down your way. Let's take a look. It might have made its way down there. Did it make its way down there? Nope, it fizzled. This is the one from a couple days ago. It fizzled out. So hey, it's beautiful down in Jamaica. Look at that. Beautiful. Are you all ready for hurricane season? It could be a little active for you down there as we have La Nina. No more El Nino, which means we, we have more chances of stuff developing in the in the Caribbean. But beautiful day down there for you all down there. So enjoy it. Let's take a look at the winds. The wind maps are kind of neat. I'll tell you where that front's at. Even though, yep, so you can see it right here. You can kind of see the front line a little bit. Kind of converging a little bit right there over Jamaica. Isn't that weird? The lower level winds. The, the mountains of Hispaniola are fascinating because the clouds the mountains are above the clouds and uh that actually disrupts the the wind flow and you can see it lower level look at that the mountains control the weather and you can see the winds just stop they do the little passage is that the monarch Mona, Mona Passage or something? Is that what they, is that right here? I can't remember. I think it's right here. Remember, Dorian was expected to go across these mountains and, and get disrupted. Well, it didn't. It actually uh, went around the mountains and made, made itself very strong. But these this Hispaniola can def, definitely disrupt uh, storms. And then when you get over here to Cuba... This part of Cuba is flat, so that's why we don't see any any storms ever really weaken over Cuba, because the mountains don't disrupt the winds. And you can see that with the wind flow here. See the wind flow here? It doesn't care. Wind flow here? Cares. <laughs> the winds stop, and the mountains make all kinds of chaos. Jamaica, you can tell you can tell Jamaica's got some high mountains too. There's your winds coming down around it, so yeah, you know. Anyway, how about that? All right, we're done yakking about that. Good Friday. Um, Honeymoon Island. R.E. Riggs. Nah, a little too soon. I'd be... Yeah, yeah, a little too soon. I mean, we got a storm system Sunday. Sunday, there's a storm system coming. It's going to produce some big storms um, out west. Not really sure if it'll make it here or not. This is 
Well, I mean, all right, here's that big storm system Sunday, Monday. It could be out of here by Friday. Here's Friday morning. So, so far, this system might be gone. Friday could be good. Looks good. Good. Good Friday. That's what I was thinking. If that storm system um, gets on out of here, could be all right. I'm not going to look at the GFS because it's terrible. That long ahead. So, anyway, all my Florida fans that live across the Interstate 4, Tampa Bay included, if you guys are looking for hurricane windows, 40% off. Great company here. Great guys. Good friends of mine. And they have a great reputation, too. All you got to do is read the reviews and stuff. 40% off, man. It's a real deal. A couple of neighbors just got them done here and um, love them. So read all about them. Good people. 200 mile an hour winds. Let's hope we never have to test that. But say goodbye to plywood. <laughs> you deserve it. And hides the heat a little bit. All right, so we live Friday. If you're always curious when we're going to be live again, I have this right here. Next Daily Brew, right there. Next Daily Brew, Wednesday, 320. I'll update that here in a second. We always put today's Daily Brew right here. You can watch it again. You can also watch it on YouTube or your app and keep up with it there. We have a meeting to go to now, so I will not post anything for a little while. Tomorrow I got a meeting with the Pinellas County. Going to be doing a collaboration with them on uh, some videos to prepare everybody for hurricane season. So I'm excited about that. And then Friday, we're supposed to have a softball tournament at Eddie Seymour. But I watch Mike's weather page, and he says it might rain. <laughs> Saturday looks good, though. Um, hey, G. Dangers wants to know about mountains and tornadoes. They do happen, yes, but they don't happen very often. So as always, uh, when we do see one in Colorado or something, man, it makes big news because, you know, it, dis it disrupts the airflow a lot, and that prevents um, tornadoes a lot of times. So, Linda, thank you. Have a good trip to uh, New Orleans. Oh, man, Jamie. Yeah, I saw some videos from Texas with the hail. That's terrible. At least your, did your windows get busted? That, that would be worse is your windows getting busted. But yeah, I do. I did hear the. Uh, there you go. They do happen, but not very often. I know I saw one out over uh, overseas that was fascinating. Uh, over the Swiss Alps, maybe. But yeah, they're they're very rare. That's a lot of time. You know, Tornado Alley. Think about it. Kansas and Texas, all the flat lands, right? I mean, you get them out there more because uh, um, geography definitely helps. So, anything else we could chit chat about? Good luck to my boy Kyle this weekend racing the My Radar Chevrolet. I assume it's a Chevy. <laughs> I don't even know what he drives. Shopper approved. What's this thing? My recent purchase. Nah, delete, delete. Hey, the cool thing about our new um, chat. Oh, this weekend. He's racing this weekend. Kyle Weatherman. All right. Cool thing about our new brew crew area is that you get a email when I post. So you never, never miss a thing. Shelly says we average 12 posts a day through the year. So that means on average you'll get 12 emails a day. How about that? Tina wants to know, are we done with the cold weather? Hey, Dana, uh, Tina, that's a good question. But, yeah, I mean, this next cold, yeah, well, for us, 
Yes. I mean, we had frost. Did anybody have frost in the panhandle? We had a frost advisory for a big part of Alabama and parts of Georgia. I didn't realize we had a frost advisory for North Florida. I missed that. I would have showed, showed that last night. Uh, temps, Katie, for where? What kind of temps? Like temp, temps, like tip tips? So water tips is a good question too. Um, Dana, we had a lot of winds over the Atlantic. Kind of cooled things down a little bit, which is kind of what I was thinking. I mean, that's uh, – here's your seven-day temp change on the maps too. It's really kind of neat. Um, well, it's kind of zoomed in the whole area, but let me go to uh, the Atlantic, North Atlantic. So your seven-day temperature change on, on sea surface temperatures um, went down a little bit. We have a lot of winds over over the Atlantic. So that's why, I was, you know, if you watch this a lot, I've you know, been cautious about this water temperature news because it really doesn't matter what the water temperatures are in March. It's what they are in July, August, September. So if the water temperature is even out and average out, by then that's all that matters. So a lot of hype about the water temperatures now. We don't know what they're going to do a month from now. So um, they are cooling down. They And that could be temporary. It could just be temporary, but... Uh, let's look at temperatures for Katie. Let's let's look at everybody. Let's take a look at the old Euro and look at temperature. Well, you know, GFS doesn't do very bad with temperatures. So let's go look at GFS. We can do this one. Let's see what kind of trends we have here in the south here. Um, coming up. So, another cool day tomorrow. High temperatures today. We'll barely hit 70s up there. Um, let me just hit the button here. It's faster. All right, so here's uh, tomorrow, 40s, 50s. Only 30s are North Tennessee northward. Uh, there's your Reds sneaking back in tomorrow. 80s back for South Florida tomorrow, Thursday. 70s up through Alabama and Georgia. Uh, tomorrow night, eh, nothing that crazy. 60s, you know. Friday, maybe, maybe a couple 50s up north. <coughs> Here's uh, so that little. Well, obviously it's gonna. It's well, it's, well. This is because it's rain. So your high temperatures Friday aren't going to be very high because it's going to be raining. But it's not really a cold front. Uh, back down to upper 50s on Saturday morning. Then your heat returns for Saturday. 80s throughout Florida again. This is a Saturday. Um, maybe a little cold line um, as this front finally comes through behind. This is Sunday morning, 40s. Then a uh, slow warm up, I assume. There's a big warm up. Here's Tuesday. There's 80s. This is on Wednesday. 80s creeping up into uh, Upper Gulf there, Texas. 80s into Georgia on Wednesday. Big time 80. Oh man, look at that warm up next Thursday. Jeez, it's got 70s and 80s all the way up there. And then a week. This is Good Friday, um, Friday morning nothing here's that next cold front man look at that upper 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 80s a week from friday this is easter weekend there's that front that might try to come through so may, maybe saturday morning back down in the 50s again but nothing significant ah, a little cool there maybe sunday morning easter morning now that's tricky maybe sunday morning easter could be chilly 40s down into florida that's too far away that i really know Euro's not showing it. Well, it didn't go out that far. We really can't go out more than 10 days to be safe. So I wouldn't believe that yet. So nothing tricky. How about that? <laughs> There's a lot of pool decks, Shelly. <laughs> Marty, I can do that. When's the law of Monday night, Tuesday morning? Seattle to Tampa. Uh, let's go to Wendy's site. Take a looky here. Um, let's take. Oh, that's a big screen. Didn't want to do that. Um, I don't really. I forget where to look here. Um, I used to know. I can't. Oh man, now you pressured me. I can't remember where the. Uh, Winds are. Oh, there's surface. Um, I 
I have to Google something here to sound very professional. Where's Alberto at there, cowboy? Oh, yeah, it looks uh, um, it looks like it's going to miss you. It looks like it's going to keep on going uh, more out to sea. It doesn't look like it's going to swing your way at all. Um, uh, let's see. I can't. 30,000. All right, we'll go there. 30,000 feet. All right. So, Marty wants to know when's Monday night to Tuesday. So, let's go to Monday night here. From Seattle to Tampa. Well, you're going to be flying into them. How about that? <laughs> So it looks like on your way, on your approach to Tampa, these are 30,000 feet winds. Or no. Hold on. Well, it won't change much. I'm trying to get a good flight level winds here on this, but I'm not really. But regardless, yeah, it's going to get kind of windy. I, I, doesn't matter what level we're at here. This is all winds. This is 3 a.m. Tuesday. But as far as Alberta goes, Canada, um, our low pressure area that we were talking about this weekend is probably going to keep on pushing out. It's attached to a frontal line, so that front's going to keep pushing it. So nothing. Doesn't look like very much impacts as this low pressure ends up going out to sea. Not a true nor'easter. The GFS is trying to develop this dang thing. 995, 994. <laughs> Just hanging out here Sunday. That could happen. <laughs> anyway, all right. We've been a good hour. So, we'll be live Friday uh, again. Um, and... Um, yeah, we got a lot. I might be out at a storm chaser Friday. Might be going south. All right. Going south. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great Wednesday, and uh, we will see you on Friday. All right. Thanks for watching our Daily Brew, and uh, see you next time.